Hi, in this video we're going to be talking about Kubuntu Linux, so it's yet another version or flavor of Linux that you might want to check out. So maybe you're getting sick of Windows and are not a fan of Windows 11, but want to try a Linux version that kind of has some of the same look and feel to it. Uh, so this might be the one for you. Alright, so to install this Linux, you're going to have to download the ISO file like you do for Windows, and then burn it to a flash drive or DVD if you still have one of those. And you'll have to use your favorite media creator tool. So I'll put a link in the description to some of the tools that we have tried out for making bootable flash drives. Alright, and then once you boot up to your flash drive, you'll get this menu here. It'll have a 30 second countdown. So you'll need to either you know, press the arrow key to make it stop, or otherwise it'll go into whatever option you happen to be on. And the first one is the one we want to choose anyways. Alright, so there's two ways to do this. You could either try it out, which means running it live in memory. And that way you don't have to install it on your computer, but you have to keep in mind that anything you do, any changes you make, things you install will all be erased once you shut it down because it's only running in memory. But it's a good way to check it out before installing it. Okay, so we're going to press enter here at this first option. Alright, so we're loading up. Okay, so here's the screen where you could try it. So if you press this button here, it'll load the Linux desktop, and then you can play around with it without installing it. Then you could change your language if you need to, or internet connection if you have more than one. All right, so we're going to actually install it, so we're going to click on this button here, Install Kubuntu. Okay, so it'll kind of go through this wizard, kind of like you have when you install Windows. All right, so we're going to pick American English. It should pick the right settings by default, but you could change them if needed. Time zone if you need to change it. Keyboard layout if you need to change that. Alright, so here we could do a normal installation with all the apps, or we could just do a minimal installation if you want to save space. And let's say you're only using it for a single purpose and you don't need all the other stuff, you could do this. Alright, we're going to do the normal installation. Alright, so here's the important part. So it's probably better to use a separate hard drive if you have one to install it on assuming you're going to do something like a dual boot or you already have Windows going or you could actually shrink your Windows C drive if you have room and then make room for it to install Linux on that as well so we did a video on how to dual boot Windows and Linux so I'll put a link to that in the description so you can see how that's done alright and then we're going to do the erase disk because we're using a dedicated disk but you could also do manual partitioning if you want to decide the size of the partitions or make some extra ones and that type of thing. Alright, so it shows what we're going to do here. We have a little 60 gig drive that we're going to install it on. You can encrypt the system if you want, like BitLocker, but we're going to leave it alone. Click on Next. Alright, now we need a username. We'll just call this Bob. And then I'll actually use that same name for the actual username itself. And then you can change the name of the computer if you don't want to go with their selection. And then we'll make a password here, nice and simple. Alright, so it's too basic here. It'll still let me use it, but it just gives you a warning that it's uh, too simple. And then you could do this option if you don't want to have to type in your password, which of course can be a security risk, but it's up to you. Alright, we're going to click on Next. Alright, so here's a summary of what's going to happen. Location, keyboard, partitions. And now we'll click on Install. Right, so it's telling us it's going to make changes to the disk and you can't undo them. So we'll click on Install Now. Alright, so this process here will take a little bit of time, so I'll pause the video and be back when it's done. Alright, so that was pretty quick compared to some of the other Linux installations. So it says it's done. Now we just need to click on Done and check the box for Restart Now. And now it says to remove the installation medium and press enter, uh, most likely so you don't accidentally boot to your flash drive and start the installation over again. So we'll do that and press enter. Alright, so we're booting up here for the first time. So this is using the Plasma desktop.
All right, so when you first start up here, you get a welcome screen if you want to go through these tips here. Some information on how things work, you could do that. Okay, so here is our basic desktop. You can see we have a taskbar, which they call panels. They have some pinned icons, system tray, even with an overflow here with some other options. So now it's looking for updates right now. You can see we even have an update icon, kind of like Windows has. All right, then we have our start menu. Even though I don't think they call it a start menu, but you could actually search it. Common apps here. Pin it to keep it open. So you could view all applications if you want to view everything in order. Or you could just look for categories here where they're broken down. It's the same apps, they're just categorized here. It comes with Firefox for web browser and Thunderbird for email by default. And it comes with LibreOffice if you want to uh, work on some Word documents or Excel spreadsheets because it'll actually open those type of files. System options here, which we'll go through some of those, and then utilities. Okay, so let's start with the taskbar here or panel. If you right click on it, you could add or manage widgets. So these widgets, you could click on one of these to install it and add it to your panel down here. Like let's say backup status, for example. And you can see it's down here. You could click on it to run it. So this is giving me an error because there's no connection right now, but that's fine. And if you do panel configuration, you could change the position here. So if you want to have your panel on the top or the side, Align the center left or right, take the full width, or just fill the content. Have it be floating, have it be translucent, always visible. So if you want to hide it, you could do that as well. And you could actually come here and put a number to change the height. And you could actually clone it too, and you could add additional panels. Let's say you want to have one on the top with its own icons, so you could do that as well. So there's the Add Panel button right there. And then you could add widgets to your desktop and so on. Then we have some alternatives if you want some additional settings like this. All right, let's check out the right click desktop options here. I'm going to change your wallpaper. So this will open up various other settings too, you know, mouse actions, locations, icon settings, filtering, so on. You can check your display configuration. Want to change your resolution and so on. We'll go through these options here in a second. Your new options for new folders and files. Sorting options for your icons. Then you can enter the edit mode again for the desktop. Alright, then if we click on the start button again, we could do places. We could go to sleep, restart, shut down, leave, which means either lock or log off. And then while we're here, let's go back to system here. So the Dolphin app is kind of like File Explorer. You could right click on folders and get specific actions here. You could even view in a split view. Open it in a new tab so you have tab options like you do with File Explorer. And you can right click in a blank spot for new options. Sorting options. Open a terminal to this location. Assign some tags. View the properties. Let's do the properties of documents for example. So here's where you can set permissions, sharing if you want to install Samba to do so, some details. And then you have your view options up here, back and forth, search box, menu options here, kind of like File Explorer has. All right, then we have our console, so if you need to type in some commands, you can do that. I'm going to make a startup disk, uh, check out the system monitor, and then utilities is where you'll find the text editor like notepad, calculator. Uh, this is used for zip files and other type of compressed files. You can also use this for your text editor as well. All right, so now let's take a look at the settings here. So this is kind of like the Windows settings for all the different categories. So some of the stuff we already saw. 
keyboard options, and some of them will have subcategories like this. Multimedia, game controller, drawing tablets, sound options, display options, which we saw, accessibility, uh, discs, so what device actions will happen with your discs and cameras. Thunderbolt KDE Connect, which is like the Windows Phone link to connect your phone. Then you can install printers, Wi-Fi options here, for firewall, proxy connection preferences. So for some reason they disable the firewall on many of these Linux versions here, so of course you could enable it if you want. Online accounts, if you want to add an account, such as OwnCloud, NextCloud, or Google account. So we saw the wallpaper options. We have some theme options here. A bunch of subcategories here as well. System sounds, login screen options. Text and fonts. View your fonts. You want to set your default applications and file associations, kind of like Windows has. Notification options. Window management options for your task switcher and so on. Activities, general behavior, search options. Screen lock options. You want to check out recent files, change your language, spell checking options, date and time options, power management, software update. Manage and add new users from here. You can make them standard and administrator, just like you can in Windows. Auto start options, so if you want to see what's going to start with your computer. Session options. And then backup options, if you have any backups that you've made. All right, so those are your settings. And then if you go to the All Applications, click on Discover. This is kind of like the Microsoft Store, where you could download and install various apps here and also view your installed apps and delete them if needed. Here we have some updates. You could update them all at the same time. Settings. And if you find an app you like, you can just click here to download and install it. So they're all broken down into categories as well, so we won't go through all of them. Even some system settings icons, some add-ons. And then add ons for Plasma as well. All right, so let's close this out. So, Kubuntu and other Linux versions have the ability to use Wine, which allows you to install certain Windows apps in Linux. So, let's check that out. So, let's do a search for Wine here. All right, we'll get Wine. Okay, install from Ubuntu. You could also install this via the command line if you want as well. Give it the password here. All right, so while that's installing, let's go download a Windows app. Search for 7-zip. Download the executable for Windows. All right, so we'll pause the video for a second here and let this installation finish. Okay, so the installation is complete, so we should technically be able to double click our zip file here and execute it. But I've noticed with Kubuntu that it doesn't use Wine by default. So you may want to install Wine via the command line just to see if that works any better for you. Otherwise, you could come here, click on Choose Other. Let's go Home, Devices. Let's find the User folder, USR. Bin folder. We'll go down to W here for Wine. Right there. on open. So now it's doing the initial configuration here for wine. So this may also fix it too after you do this initial configuration. Looks like my mouse cursor got big for a second there. 
All right, so now we have the 7-zip installation screen, so we'll click on Install. Now you can see it's trying to put it in program files on the C drive. And if you click the Browse button here, you can see it has this whole Windows file structure with user folder and everything. So this is mainly used for Windows apps. This is not really how your computer files are laid out. So think about kind of like a virtual Windows environment that it could use to install these Windows apps. All right, so we'll click on Install. All right, let's go back to our software list here under Applications. Now we have 7-Zip. Now you can see we're running the 7-Zip Windows program within Linux. So this is not going to work for all Windows apps, but it will work for a lot of them. So that's a nice feature of using Wine. All right, so there is your basic overview and installation of Kubuntu Linux. So I will put a link in the description where you can download it. And like I said, you can either try it out in the live temporary environment or install it on your hard drive and see how you like it. All right, thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe. Thank mm -hmm. you.